Has there ever been a time in your military career where that training just kind of kicked in automatically? Yeah, uh, all the time. I think the first time I was in a really intense situation like that, I didn't even have a chance to respond initially. It was in Iraq. We, we were in Al-Qaim. We were doing a very large battalion-sized operation. We kicked this operation off by shooting a, a Miklik down Main Street. A Miklik's a mine-clearing mine charge. Mm -hmm. It's a four-inch fire hose filled with plastic explosives. It's a couple hundred feet long, and it's launched with a rocket. Yeah. And it drapes it down Main Street because yeah. the IED threat was super high. Mm -hmm. We were going house to house, and we get to this, this house, and this old man came out of it. It looked like he was like 90. <laughs> I don't know how old he was. I didn't get to ask him, but old man all bent over. And the platoon commander says, hey, uh, when you go into that house, that old man just, there's an old man just went in there. I know we have non-combatants in there. We have civilians in there. So go non-lethal when you go through the door. We're war fighters, but we're also good people. We're not there to mm -hmm. just kill everybody. Like right. there, There's nothing in it for us to kill women and kids and old people. My squad's the one that goes into this building. We go in and we see the old guy at the end of the hall dart into a room. Me and two other guys, we start moving down the hallway and we're clearing rooms as we go and there's a stairwell to the right. And the two guys next to me are getting ready to go up the stairs. And I, I grabbed Adam on the shoulder and I said, hey man, wait till you got enough people before you go up the stairs. Right, right, you don't know right, how right. big the second floor is, how many rooms mm -hmm. might be up there, that sort of thing. You don't want one or two guys going up there on their own and getting in a gunfight, not having enough people to, yeah. to support it. So I go past them. I make it like two steps past them. And it's weird how, how your senses get overwhelmed when, when things happen. So all I knew is there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't really remember hearing anything. I don't remember hearing gunfire. I don't remember hearing explosions. Like I heard commotion. I started to turn around and I got slammed into by my saw gunner who basically tackled me down the hallway wow. yelling grenade. Oh, as he did it, I look back, the hallway is completely full of smoke and dust. You can't really see much. Adam's laying on the ground, not moving. I don't have any idea what's going on at this point. But I do know that I've got an AAV outside with a 50 caliber machine gun on the top of it. And I know I don't have any guys upstairs yet. So I take the one guy that's with me. I go around outside and I go to the AAV commander and I say, mm -hmm. it's level the second floor. And so they open up the 50 cal and just start chopping the second floor to pieces <laughs> with a 50 cal. And then I see the rest of my squad at the other end of the building. They're standing at the base of the building and throwing grenades over the, over the edge of the building, not knowing what's above them either. So we start providing suppressive fire, not knowing what the threat is over the top of the building. And I get to the rest of my guys, and uh, a couple of them are pretty banged up. One's, one's holding his arm like this. The, the platoon leader was there at the time, right? And he keeps yelling at this guy to put his arm back in the air because every time he put his arm down, it'd spray blood all over everybody. Oh, God. He took a round through the front of his uh, bicep, and it went out his tricep, but didn't hit the bone. And uh, a couple of the other guys took a lot of fragmentation from the grenades. Mm -hmm. We get those guys, tell them, hey, get back to the AV, seek cover, mm -hmm. you know, treat each other. We knew we still had Adam inside. Felt like we had the threat suppressed from the top. We get to the door. We look in. The whole building's full of smoke and dust. You can't really see what's going on. I went through the door. Platoon leader followed me. Saw gunner followed me. And this is where... You asked about like gross motor skills and right, stuff right. like that, right? So I go down the hallway. I get to Adam, who's laying on the floor. Um, he's dead. Uh, it was pretty apparent he was dead. His eyes were wide open and filled full of, you know, dust and debris and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and you know, that's one of the things we train on for to tell if a bad guy's dead is you flick him in an eye in the eye. It's called a, a dead check, right? You flick him in the eyeball, and if, even if they're in a coma, they'll they'll twitch. Like their eye will react to that. Okay. Uh, it's dead check. You flick him in the so eyeball. Somebody's fl flicking you in the eye. They're, they're making sure. You're yeah, even if you're unconscious, your your eye, your body will react to that. So the fact that his eyes were wide open and full of debris, it was fairly certain at that point that, that he he was he was dead. There was nothing, not not much we could do about it. So I get up, grab him by his armor, and try to drag him. And I just keep falling down. I'm pulling, trying to pull like four times my body weight. Right. You know, out of this building on this slippery concrete floor, and I just kept falling down. I'm trying to pull him. My, my boots kept slipping. And then Shit. my saw gunner gets up and grabs onto him. And the two of us are able to move him and we get him out. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you know, later on, we're talking through what happened and everything. And I talked to the platoon commander. And what I, I had no idea was going on while I was trying to pull him down the hallway is my platoon leader had been shooting into all the doorways down the hallway the whole time. Mm -hmm. So he was over my head with his M4, just sh just dumping rounds down the hallway mm -hmm. into, into all these open doors. I never heard him shoot once. I didn't know wow, he was shooting insane. until he told me afterwards that he went through like three magazines. I was like, I never, I, I never heard a shot fired, not once, the whole time. That's wild. Yeah. So your brain just, it's, and you have no control over that, right? right. You can't be like, oh, I want to hear things. 
and now yeah. you can hear things. Like it just happens. So you have to tailor your training to account for mm -hmm. how your brain reacts to those situations so that you can get through them.